Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and this is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE.TV's continuous coverage of HP Discover. We're covering it wall to wall. Uh, check out the videos on SiliconANGLE.TV. Uh, go to youtube.com slash SiliconANGLE. You'll see the playlist from our recent events. We were just down at the, uh, the IBM Edge conference. Uh, we're at EMC World two weeks ago. We got, we're at SAP Sapphire. We're now here at HP Discover. And we're here with Brian Cook, who's the Vice President and General Manager of the Travel and Transportation Business at HP. And I'm also joined by Jeff Co Kelly, my, my colleague, who's very active in services angle. So first, Brian, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, thank you very much. Appreciate you coming on. And um, so, first of all, HP Discover, you know, big event for you guys. You know, a lot event. of your customers here, I'm sure. Yeah, a lot What's of big the buzz? announcements. What's the buzz out there? A lot of big announcements, a lot of excitement about what we're doing in cloud and you know, what we're here to talk about with uh, in the airline space, so. Yes, it, it, cloud is real. We, we've been calling 2012 the year of the cloud for a while now, and it's, you know, they got in a hype cycle, it's beyond the hype cycle, it's real, Cluster customers are doing it. So you're doing this in airlines. We're doing it in airlines. Yep. How's that work? Um, well, it's it's working great. I mean, it's a it's the first, I would say, it's the first truly global, vertically focused cloud offering that you'll see in the market, and it's probably a unique offering for H for HP, not a unique offering for HP, a unique offering that HP can bring to the market because we're combining some of our traditional data center services, ITO and, and, and some mm -hmm. of that, with our expertise around our SaaS offerings, our core uh, big system passenger processing systems that we run for some of the world's biggest airlines, but that we also run for ourselves, right? And our platform offering, we're combining all that together with our industry expertise and taking this to market. And there's no other, there's no other organization uh, in the world that has all of those assets. So you said the first truly global, vertically oriented cloud offering. Right. So, so I, I'm trying to think of it, I know Cerna has a health cloud, but that's really not global. Uh, I know NICE has a you know a cloud for financial services. Uh, I'm not sure if that's global or not. So Wait. what did you mean by that? Clarify that a little so, bit. So global because we leverage our global footprint, uh -huh. right? And global because well, airlines are, you know, by nature a, a global business. Right, and then um, when we talk about industry, it's not just cloud for an industry, right? It's 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 cloud with services that are related to that industry. When I mean services, I don't just mean um, kind of you know I, general IT services, but specific platforms that we built for this industry and specific software that we offer for this industry. Uh, you know, great big passenger processing systems that allow airlines to check in passengers, uh, ticket passengers, board passengers at the gates, those types of things which are, you know, uh, uh, you know, multi, multi, multi million dollar investments that we've made. So why, why airlines? Let's talk about that a little bit. Uh, why airlines? Well, probably what's not well known is that HP processes about 500 million passengers on an annual basis. Uh, it's around, it's about 20% of the traveling public worldwide. So. Why airlines, right? We, we run systems for some of the big, biggest ISVs and some of the biggest airlines that give us that number of 500 million passengers. So, you know, what, what does that work out to? About a million and a half people a day, depending on HP services, to be up and running in the environment that, that airlines need, which is available, reliable, and scalable. Uh, and, 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 you know, that's why airlines, because it's a logical extension of where we were running the traditional ITO data center type systems, right, and applications, to now, you know, move forward with this cloud offering. So, so it's, 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 it's an HP cloud. It's an uh, HP cloud. You're the cloud. cloud service provider. We're the cloud service provider. So, so, so it's, you know, when I talk about uh, the cloud offering, it's at a, at, a, at a base level, it's what we offer to everyone in terms of our cloud offering. It's, it's, it's the HP, you know, converged cloud. Yeah, that's okay. what it is. That's the foundational infrastructure. It's the raw material, offering. essentially. The it's raw yeah. material, yeah. right? All right, and then on top of that, you're building on top industry of that, specific services. We're building industry specific services starting with our platform as a service, which is our AirSOA platform. And in that platform, we've built out a lot of um, industry specific messaging. So we're driving standards in the industry around, around uh, web services exchange, so the, 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 the schemas that support industry web services. This, this industry is wrapped with um, 
a set of relationships between all the different providers, ISVs and airlines talking to airlines, airlines talking to alliances and working within alliances. So we built out a full set of capabilities around those web services so that an airline that wants to consume that platform as a service doesn't have to invest in doing that from the start at, at the get-go, right? We've also invested in building out security as a service with full PCI compliance so that an airline can take that service, take that PCI service so they don't have to invest in PCI. And what we do is we, 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 we capture the credit card information in, the, in that kind of industry message exchange before it hits the airline's data center and we tokenize it. So they don't have to worry about it anymore. We've got that, right? We've taken care of that. And we did that by leveraging our Agile card framework, which was built for the financial services sector. And we kind of put an industry wrapper on it. And what about applications? So in terms of applications, uh, as I said earlier, we offer a, uh, our SaaS platform, which is our, you know, one of our industry leading uh, passenger services systems. As I said, it does all the, 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 the passenger, you know, the passenger processing, check-in and all of that. And what we've done is we've made it cloud-like. So we've wrapped our AirSo infrastructure and built out a set of industry capable APIs, web services, right, with, with all of the security that you need, right? And we've also leveraged some of the other assets in HP to start allowing airlines to build applications on that platform or under that platform, however you want to describe it, so they can do full life solution lifecycle management. We've got um, uh, ArcSight and Fortify for monitoring and security um, and you know all of the testing and the build out. It's an open platform, so you can, you know, it supports Java, C++, it's running on, on, on uh, Red Hat. And we're building our new generation airline applications on top of this platform uh, using this architecture. So we're really eating our own dog food in this case. So, uh, or drinking your own champagne. Or drinking my own champagne. Hey, I like that better. <laughs> yeah, drinking my own champagne. So, uh, so, this is re so reservation <coughs> systems, reward systems. What about like uh, 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 the mission critical part of, um, of the airlines, like the parts maintenance and things like that? Does that seep into the cloud or are customers saying, well, wait a minute, we need to carve that out? Well. You know, all of the systems that sit in airlines are mission critical. If you've ever been a passenger stuck at an airport and trying and lined up for hours trying to get through the right. through the queues and, and, and the rest of it, but we are working in some areas on uh, flight operations systems. Uh, we're working with crew scheduling systems, right. and this is um, a long-standing, um, you know, some long-standing skills that we've had, you know, running these systems for for many many years. So we are modernizing them. And, and making them operate into the cloud. So, so we're not afraid of that at all. And we offer the SLAs, you know, as we do with our passenger services system, we need, you know, we need multiple nine availabilities, um, you know, millisecond response times for transactional latency, and we do that through our distributed cloud. Right, that's not the starting point for the cloud, but you're saying that that's what you, you're evolving to, right? It, it's not the starting point. Well, well, today we do it today, yep. right? And as we build out these cloud, these, these applications, and as we enable airlines to build these applications, it's the minimum entry point that we need to support this industry. So virtually every app that you've supported on premise, you feel you can move that to the cloud. Is that a correct assertion? Or? You know, I don't know that I would say every app, but in this industry, with the expertise that we have, there are a multitude of applications that we believe we can support through our services organization, the transformation to take these applications to be able to run in the cloud. The vast majority of them. Vast majority. I so wouldn't. I wouldn't go every. A, I never, never say, say every, every. Right. Right. But yeah. so. But from a from a value standpoint, the vast majority of the application portfolio can be run in the cloud. Yeah, we believe so. Yes. And so, what's the driver for that? I mean, it's, I guess they're the same as ever. But talk about from an industry standpoint. I mean, there's a lot of turmoil in the airline industry. You know, so you got some upstarts. You got consolidation. I mean, it's a. But that's very, the driver, right? I yeah. mean, is is it isn't isn't you know the the challenges in the airline industry. Uh, I believe they lend themselves to cloud computing in terms of the reduction in CapEx, right? The, the reduction in OpEx when you talk about some of the shared services that we're building. Yeah, the out. unpredictability of that business is... Yeah. And unpredictability not only at a business level, but at an operations level. I want to sure. introduce a concept called storm computing. You know, you I don't know how many miles you travel here, but I'm uh, a frequent traveler. <laughs> And I've been stuck on the west coast when there's a snow, sorry, on the east coast when there's a snowstorm. We don't get too many snow, snowstorms on the west coast. <laughs> on the east coast when there's a snowstorm, I was stuck in the ash cloud in Europe. And we call this, this, this concept storm computing where all of the airline systems hit red line. They got, you know, you got your foot to the floor, the systems are at max capacity, right? Uh, because they're running a traditional environment. And so we look at the opportunity here with cloud to be able to offer that, ex that, that dynamic or scalable infrastructure so the applications can deal 
with these storm issues, right, or these irregular operations, we call it, and so they can you know, expand that, that their, their capacity, their IT capacity to support this operation, or to support this irregular operation for the period that it lasts, and recovery, by the way, takes weeks in some cases, for, you know, for a weekend snowstorm, you could take weeks in an airline to recover, right? So we'll run these systems, and we'll run these systems on the extended capacity for, for several weeks, and then when the airline says, look, we want to go back to like normal operating mode, you know, we're over, we'll shrink it back down again. And isn't that what cloud's all about? So um, help me understand that, um, that dynamic. So you got a snowstorm in the East Coast, um, so planes get grounded, everything gets backed up. Right. But you're saying, with the additional capacity, you can what do analytics to provide? Um, well, there's analytics, but you know, just because the planes aren't on the ground doesn't mean that the airline's not going at a, at, at a thousand miles an hour trying to find solutions to the problems that their passenger, passengers and their crews are facing about getting to their destination. And if they don't have the capacity. It's a ripple effect that just you said. Well, you well yeah. Possess, you know, I mean, you know, planes weeks. on the ground. That means you've missed your flight. Yeah. That flight no longer exists, right? So all of the future flights which hopefully are full, right? Doesn't mean that you can, you know, we can just say, let's put you on another flight tomorrow, because by the way, that flight was already full, right? We hope, or running at 80 or 90% capacity. So there's the whole area of reaccommodation and rescheduling and rebooking, not only the passengers, but the crews and the aircraft to realign that schedule. That's why it takes some cases, you know, weeks to recover, you know, and, and you've seen people sleeping at airports for days. Why didn't you just put them on the next flight? Because the next flight was already full. So it's that type of compute power that we will that, that we believe uh, can come from cloud that will really help this industry, and that's you know hundreds of millions of dollars of costs for these airlines when they hit these storms. You know, you can an airline can lose profitability for a quarter because they run into a couple of weekends worth of uh, you know storms. So who are some of the clients? Can you talk about that? Um, who are some of the clients? You know, we I, I guess the best thing to say is we run you know we because we, we haven't got clearance to talk about any one particular client. But we run uh, some of the biggest airlines in North America and in Europe. And we've launched, I think at this press conference, we've launched uh, a cloud service with um, Interjet in Mexico. Uh, and they're using the product to do scheduling for uh, their pilots and their crews for simulator, sorry, their, their pilots for simulator uh, training. And that's another application that lends itself well to cloud because you know, when things go on normally, they just do kind of recurring training and so on. But then because of labor rules, they get an opportunity to, to change aircraft or change where they sit in the aircraft, left seat, right seat, captain, you know, co-pilot. And when that happens, then there's a massive rush on the scheduling tool to realign, you know, the, all the training. And then we just allow them to burst and then go back to normal. Interesting. I, I, um, I lived that example last summer, uh, VM World, going out to VM World, there was a hurricane in the East Coast. You're based right. in the East Coast, Brian? Atlanta. Yeah, so the hurricane in, in Boston area, and um, so I was flying out Sunday, so of course everybody's saying, you got to fly out mo uh, Monday, Monday. Knew, or, or Saturday, because you knew the Sunday flight was going to get pushed to Monday, but there were of course no flights, right? right. So I'm panicked, because like, we're doing the yeah. cube there, so I'm pounding away, looking at all the, the websites to try to find flights, there weren't any flights, and then all of a sudden, a flight from Delta came on, right. and it was empty. So. Delta had the analytics, maybe the capacity, maybe they're a client, wink, wink, I don't know. <laughs> so, so that was impressive to me, sort of an old line right. airline that was more responsive than to that disaster than say a JetBlue or a Southwest. And uh, I mean, that, I presume that's the type of example that, that you're talking about here. But, yes, um, absolutely. Yeah, so, um, so that whole industry, as we were talking about before, just is, is transforming. What do you see as the big trends in, uh, in airline travel? Well, I mean, we, we see it today, and you experience it when you travel and you check in that extra bag and you've got to pay a fee for it, right? So we see airlines needing to drive ancillary revenues, right? And bring, bring, the, bring the products that deliver not just the, the, the extra charges, but the extra value to the customers, whether it's ancillary revenues, personalization, you know, I want to sit in the aisle seat, you know, I don't want to sit in the middle seat, these kinds of choices, right? So it's, it's, it's about delivering these ancillary revenues. It's also about information analytics, uh, right? That these systems that the airlines operate have a ton of data about the passengers in them. Mm -hmm. And um, they really need to start uh, looking at that data uh, as it relates to you as an individual, not you as a, as a market segment of business traveler or a leisure traveler, but really you and your preferences as a person. I think that's going to come out. You're going to see that really becoming 
more prevalent now with the tools that are coming into the market with the ability to do this as a service you know analytics as a service data as a service you know these transactional systems have been hampered for a long time because you didn't really want to interrogate them while it while you were running your airline and now that we're able to take this data off these systems and 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 run them in the cloud you'll be able to do this more in real time and not only the structured data that you have in your in your airline systems today but what's happening in the social world what are your friends you know what do you what what's the conversation that you're having with your friend on Facebook about your experience on that airline right and then kind of monitoring that and creating what we call you know social intelligence or the ability to market socially by combining your your structured data what you know about your customer in loyalty and in, in what he's done in bookings whether he's been disrupted in the past and, and and marry that to what he's saying about you and then come out and make uh, a very specific offer that's really geared toward he what what he wants and what he's saying he wants so that sounds great and, and I was going to ask you about data and where data plays and you know, I think you touched all the bases there are you seeing and I know you can't name names but are you seeing certain uh, airlines ahead of the game there that are actually doing that today or is this more sort of concept? We do, we do. We see airlines that are, and we're, we're actually working with with uh, several carriers in, in, in North America and in Europe to define the use cases because there's so much opportunity. This is such a data rich environment, right, that we've got to really think about the use case, the application of those use cases. So uh, we think that the airlines we're obviously working with are ahead of the game yeah. uh, because they're using some of our, uh, our products well, and services. Well, Jeff and I have been working on this premise, <coughs> you know, Jeff's a big data analyst that, uh, at Wikibon, working on the premise that big data practitioners are going to create more value than big data technology suppliers, you know, and so to the extent that you can find the customers that are actually using big data and monetizing big data, those guys, are, their stock price is going to go through the roof in, in well, concept. Anyway. If, you look at the, if you look at the airlines that we support today and the systems that we run today that are so data rich and the tools that we have, you know, with the autonomy acquisition, with Vertica, and our capability around industry, around let's say airlines itself, you know, having, you know, you know, being involved in this industry for, you know, 20 plus years, running these great big systems and knowing about these great big systems and the industry expertise, you start pulling those assets together, right, and you see a unique offering where it's not just about being the tech provider or the tool provider, but you've, you've got, you, you're able to have that conversation with, with the airline at an industry level that really changes the game. Because you know the systems, and you know the business processes. All right, HP's Airline Cloud, Brian Cook, thanks very much for coming inside theCUBE and Thank sharing you. that unique vertical industry perspective, and uh, congratulations on uh, all your success, and good luck going forward. Appreciate it. All right, Thank take you. care. All right, keep it right there. We'll be right back with our next guest.